Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about protecting your smart home and online accounts using two-factor authentication and a password manager. Now, I know you think that's not sexy, but trust me, with if you see any amount of the reports on television or in the radio or in the news, this is something that it's a matter of, do you want to spend a little time now doing it or spending a whole lot later cleaning things up and sometimes it's not easy to clean up once once there's been a problem hi i'm ron nutter and we're going to be working on this together this content is also available as an amazon flash briefing or podcast please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode there are affiliate links in the description if you click on these links i will get a small commission but that won't affect the price you pay for the item if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on that subscribe button now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to be using a password manager known as Bitwarden. If you haven't heard of this one, please take a few minutes to look at it. I think you'll be very happy with what you see. It's open source, but you have a whole lot of flexibility. You can use their sync server or you can set up your own. Again, totally up to you and you name the operating system they've got a client for it, or you can use the web interface but more importantly what we're doing today is we're going to be using it as the password manager i'm going to show you the different types of two-factor authentication and then over time once we build a foundation then i'll show you how to do it with the different sites because some of the sites or services we're talking to don't make it easy to do. And that's what I want to help you do. And you may already be doing some of this and not realize it because some of the companies don't like using that term because they, they think it scares people off. So let's, before we get started, now we're going to be using something uh, called, let's get, get it up here on screen. Uh, this is a hardware token. Now, when you get into two-factor authentication, and two-factor means it's something you have. One factor is the password, it's something you know. Two factor is something you have. Now, this key can link to either a USB port or it's got Bluetooth. Now, here's the interesting thing if you couldn't see it by the little picture that was just up there, this looks like a standard USB key. It's not hollering and screaming to the world, hey, I'm a two factor token. I, I may have something valuable come stealing me. And it's also got a nice heavy, well, not heavy, but it's a nice aluminum shield to it. And I'm even finding some lanyards, which hopefully will be here in the next day or two. So you can just have this, say, hanging off your badge when you go to work, if you have one of those, or you can keep this handy. So you've always got it at the ready. So let's go ahead and switch over now. Well, get to the right page there. Now, at this point, I've already got logged in to Bitwarden and we're going to go with the web interface to start with now to get two-factor authentication up and running now that is the only thing that you have to pay for in Bitwarden and for 10 bucks a year trust me it's worth it you'll just click on the drop down arrow beside the little user icon we'll go into my account and then we will go to two-factor or two it's a, they call it two-step login it's two-factor authentication now you can see here we've got several options to work with now using authenticator app and you may have heard of google's authenticator which is where they kind of got the ball rolling from a non-commercial standpoint i've dealt with rsa tokens and other tokens over the years where it's a little window with the numbers that change every 30 seconds well this is something that you can use and not have to spend several hundred dollars a token to do so now, this, it says Authenticator app. This is what you would call a soft token. And we're going to show how to set that up. Now, I've got the, the, the Thetis. I hope, hope I'm pronouncing it right. This is the hardware token. This is the one we're going to use down here in the security key option. And then email. We're going to show how to set each one of these up so that you can decide which way you want to go. And we'll go over the, the pluses and minuses each step in the process. Okay, now we've got three different ways we're going to do this. And we're going to start off with the security key option. 
Okay, now we'll get logged in here first. And whatever you, you're setting up a password manager, what they're calling it the master password, you may see vault password. This is something that you should use nowhere else. So if you have several passwords you kind of reuse, that really is not going to be a good thing to do. So at this point, we're going to get the login process started. Now we're or actually the token setup process started and we're going to call this Thetis. And then we will say read key waiting for you to touch the button. All right. Well, we may be a little out of the process here and we're waiting for the PC first to take touch my security key. Yes and click save all right so at red key click the save button to enable this key for be used okay now you see that so you can have five different keys and having multiple keys is not a bad thing say you lose one or misplace it it's always a good idea to have a backup somewhere else so there's any number of keys uh, Ubico has been a well-known company for years that has done that. They've got a variety of keys that use that can either use near-field communication in a smartphone. They've got some, I don't know if they are linked to Bluetooth, but they've got some that will use USB-C. So they've got all sorts of possibilities. So you really can't go wrong. And in, in, several of their keys are pretty reasonable in price. So let's go back over here. So click close. All right. Now, something else you should do is you notice up here and we kind of got the cart before the horse a little bit and that's my fault they have a recovery code now why would you want a recovery code say something happens with two-factor authentication either you've misplaced your key which are you using either soft token hard token or if you're using the email setup you want to make sure that you get the recovery code captured so we'll click on that again we have to enter the password And we'll click on continue. Now we'll we'll capture that. And for right now, I'll just hold it that way. So we'll click close. And then we'll go down here. And we will log out. All right, so now we'll log in and it should prompt me. Ah, see there is it's well windows has prompt me and it's prompt me too so i will press the little button and there we go we're in so that is a good test right there it shows you how it is to get it up and running and we'll go over here and go to my account and two-step login so that is good now do you want to have more than one type of two-factor authentication set up and I'd say the answer is probably yes. Again, it never hurts to have a backup. The folks at Bitwarden will tell you as soon as you start to turn this on, the like the smartphone app doesn't have full support for some of the tokens yet. So you will want to have like email authentication. We'll get to that here in just a second. So you see what it takes to, to get it up and running. So just to make it simple, then we'll go ahead and go on to the next one and we'll just take things one step at a time. Okay, now you've seen how to do it with the hardware key. Now we're going to do soft token. Oh, forgot to tell you, when you get the recovery key, put it somewhere safe. And that's not going to be in the password manager app. Because if you can't get into the password manager app, then how do you get the recovery key? So this is where you may want to think about a, using a second password manager. And it has just the recovery codes, anything that if you can't get into... Bitwarden or whatever password manager you use that you'll have a backup. Again, you always need to have a backup plan because if you don't, that's when you'll start to question your choice of professions. So let's go ahead and we'll move on here to the using the soft token or the authenticator app and we'll enter our password. After a while, if you don't have your password remembered, you will get it done by the time you go through some of these exercises. Now, I'm going to give you a tip you probably haven't heard in a lot of places. This is called a QR code. Before you do anything with enrolling this in whatever password app that you're going to use, 
take your smartphone and I'm going to bring up just a camera app. It doesn't matter which one. And what you want to do is take a picture. And unfortunately, my screen's not exactly in the best place. Take a picture of the QR code. But most importantly, you want to capture, in addition to the QR code, you want to capture this magic string that I'll call it down here. If you go to use a two-factor soft client and it doesn't have some sort of camera input on it, you can use this to enter the information, the magic seed, whatever you want to call it. So that will let you get it up and running. So now what we'll go and do here, and I'm going to pull up just one of the apps that I've got here, and we'll tell it to scan QR code. And the phone immediately acknowledged it. It vibrated on me. So now I've got one on the bottom and it does change every 60, I'm no, sorry, every 30 seconds. So seven, five, four, three, three. And by the time you see this, that number is not going to be good anyway. We'll click on enable. All right. And we'll click close. So, so you got the little check mark there. So we're good to go there. So we will click log out and log in. Now it's asking for the code. So 915177. And you see, I've got a whole bunch of different sites set up on my phone. Don't click the remember me because then it's going to defeat the purpose of having the two factor authentication place. So we'll click OK. Again, we're up and running. So you can see it's very simple. And it, so, it, you know, take your time, make backup steps along the way. So, as you know, we mentioned earlier, we'll go back into my account, two step login, make sure you have the recovery code. And I would have it in more than one place just to be on the safe side because it's the one time you don't have it at another location. It could be an internet access issue where your app could have that particular uh, system blocked. Uh, just don't put it on a piece of paper and hide it in your wallet, but have it somewhere where you can get to it. And that way you can cut and paste or somehow to make it easy. So now we've got the soft token done. So, so far you've seen the hardware token, you've seen the software token. Now let's go ahead and do email. So now we're going to show the third type that's available with what the different devices that I've got to work with. Ubico is good and I may in, go back and, and get one of the the Ubico devices because I haven't got the latest one from them. So I definitely will probably want to revisit this later and maybe even go look at, at Duo. And Duo even offers some other options as well. So now we'll go down to email. Now this is the one you may already be using this and not realize it because some companies will say, well, enter your email and we will send you a code over email. That's two factor authentication. They've, they've gotten you to use it without realizing what it is. So let's go here. Now, one thing I will suggest, and this is why I don't use sending the code over email as a primary option. A, for the most part, it's not encrypted. It may be, say, from certain points, be encrypted, sending up to a mail server. But once it leaves that mail server, for the most part, it may not be encrypted. So you have to count on the fact that somebody may be able to see it somewhere in the process. Now, is it likely? Maybe, maybe not, but just something to raise as a precaution. So we will send, we'll tell it to send the email. All right. So I've got the email. I'm going to bring it up on another device here and son of a gun. There's my code. So we will enter the code in 018229 and click enable. All right, so now again, acid test, and this is where you want that recovery code just in case, is we're gonna log out and then log in, and we should see another email come through, son of a gun, there we go. And then we're gonna be 237, 233, and click continue. 
Okay, we're in. Now, I wanted to go through these different options so that with nothing in the password vault. So if something, heaven forbid, happened, that you wouldn't lose anything. But again, that keeps going back to why you want to have the recovery code available. And some of the two-factor options, and you'll see this when we go to uh, set up Google's access later on, they will actually give you, uh, you can have the option of getting like eight one-time codes. So if you don't have your token with you, there are, uh, what's, it's like it's eight soft tokens that you will have the option to use. And again, once you've used them, mark it off the list because you'll never be able to use those again. Also, you will notice on the screen, and let me see if I can show it to you, and there may not be a good way to do this. Uh, you'll, as you start rolling, you'll notice that there's a little countdown. Let me get over here where I can turn the phone. Can I get it up here? Yeah, so you notice where those blue dots just came up, and then it's gradually it's disappearing. That is the good window for the token to be used and it does change every 30 seconds so if you have entered it and it gets rejected say like two or three seconds into that 30 second window then wait a few seconds and try again because it could be a clock sync difference because if your clock on your smartphone or whatever device you've got the, t the soft token running on are not an exact sync with the system that you're trying to log into that could cause a problem Conversely, if you're, we say, within two to three seconds of that token expiring, I usually will let it expire, let a new one come up again, because if there's if clock, if there's any more of clock drift at all, then that can be a problem. So that's just one of the things to to be aware of, and just keep in mind for when you know you do have a problem, and just you may have to to try again. So what? we've seen so far is three ways to do it and there are others but you know i didn't want to overhome on me at once and as we go through the different sites you will see some sites support things that others do not now if you're watching this on youtube and you probably are at this point you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the ones you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on that like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.